hello friends students today we are going to deal with one of the chapters that's the fourth chapter in our text everything i need to know i learned in the forest written by vandana shiva so if you have the textbook please open it we can go to page number 22 that's the fourth chapter if you have textbook please open it okay now those who have textbook you can go through the last page of the text i mean that is page number 28 over there there are some information about vandana shiva has been given so we are going to begin from over there just basics now the chapter everything i need to know i learned in the forest what is it suggest well it is not the reading and writing and all the school activities she is talking about she is talking about the life what is being talked about that's about life how do we surviving living living is a is word so this is we are learning from the forest or the nature we can in order to understand we can also use the word nature well we live in the nature we learn from the nature that's a, another key concept key idea over there okay now this particular uh, lesson what a chapter we are uh, we are studying is taken by two of our essays first one first part is what would nature do it was written in published in 2012 and next part or last part is from forest and freedom written which is one year earlier 2011 so these two extracts have been given to us and it is in the title under the title everything i need to know i learned in the forest okay now what else what are the things she is going to she is discusses in this particular uh, chapter well first things nature she talks about the nature and how the nature influences us influenced her and how much importance is to be given to the nature then again uh, ecology and she talks about the biodiversity another key point then earth democracy she introduces us to this particular concept most of us may not have come across this term then organic farming we are all familiar with and how organic farming and biodiversity is interconnected and how it is helps to maintain the ecology and nature well then pluralism another concept we are going to discuss then consumerism we have often discussed about how consumerism is affecting the nature this is another part we are going to study okay so what are the things she is discussed about what are the things we have to know about vandana shiva before starting Now, vandana shiva is an activist there are different types of activists because people are uh, or fighting for different causes but here what we are going to study is the nature she is an activist she has uh, she has been part uh, sorry she has been a part of a movement we all of all of us have been uh, discussed and we have studied that is chipko movement now if you remember what is chipko movement chipko movement is a movement where the people humble rustic people stop try to stop or stopped actually the loggers from cutting down the trees by hugging them so how how did they stop cutting our deforestation by hugging the trees right so she is also a member or part of this particular movement that is chipko movement now it's okay uh this but uh, when uh, from chipko movement we have to, uh, what is there what is the connection over here now chipko movement is one of the movement which influenced her the most okay now what exactly brought her back to the nature or uh, what exactly pushed her towards this movement or towards um, establishing earth university or pushing the idea of earth democracy that happened after she graduated and before she going for higher studies one, one particular incident happened that incident influenced her the most and it changed the life okay so let's go if you have the textbook let's go begin from the very first page that's page number 22 have it right there 
So first pre-reading activity is there. The two questions have been asked. One about Chipko movement. What is Chipko movement? A movement. A movement to save the trees. If you are saying that, okay, fine. Now next part, role pay, played by the women. Now who are those in the forefront of that movement? It is not the men. It is the women. Why is it that? Well, we are going to find uh, find out the answer in the essay. So, if you have the text, look at the picture. There is nothing much, right? Except that's a small plant. Yes, there's something she is giving to us. She is giving a message. Let's see what is in there. Now, first paragraph. My ecological journey started in the forest of Himalaya. So, this particular paragraph until the end of that page the songs and poems our mother composed for us about the trees forest and inner forest called uh, civilizations here she is giving an information or background about what is the first influence what has drawn her to the nature at the very beginning what does it say from the himalayan forest forests of himalaya so why because her father occupation he is a forest conservator and mother she is a peasant woman or the farmer and both cases they should they were in the nature itself and her mother when they were young her mother to them the children they used to tell the stories and songs about the forest and forest civilization that's what she says the songs and poems our mother composed for us were about trees forest and India's forest civilization. So this is the early influence on her. Her mother has given had this early. In, uh, she has a early influence because of her mother or her stories or the poem. The first point, okay, influence. Now what's the first point? Her mother used to sing the, compose and sing the songs for about trees, forest, and forest civilization. Okay, this is the first thing which influenced her. Next part. Next part in page number 23, my involvement in contemporary ecology movement, contemporary, modern or at present or present day started with Chipko movement. So first she has become activist along with the Chipko. Okay, what is Chipko? Now they are giving a kind of description over here. What is it? When Chipko a non-violent response to large-scale deforestation which was taking place in the Himalayan region. This is what Vandana Shivas asked, said. Now, we may ask the question in the examination. What is Chipko movement? If you write this sentence, that is more appropriate to us from the point of examination. Chipko is a non-violent response to the large-scale deforestation that was taking place in Himalayan region. Understood? So the deforestation was taking place. Government was giving, um, sorry, um, forest department itself in the form of deforestation, logging industry. So at that time it was, yes, it's a business. But who opposed that? present woman we are coming across it when it happened in the 1970s in the 1970s women from my region she says which is region is that garhwal of lower himalayan or himalayan lower elevation himalaya come in defense of forest when deforestation is taking place women came forward and stopped it not not forest department or government why didn't they come answer is in the following paragraphs understood so who stopped peasant women who are the peasant means old-fashioned or humble rustic village people yes when 1970s so chipko movement started in the 1970s not in the particular year it's a decade observe next logging and la lands logging had led to landslides and floods scarcity of water fodder and fuel since the women provide these basic needs these are the basic needs women provide this women bring for water women prepare food women bring fodder for their cattle all these things are done by women now if their scarcity is there 
who has to work hard women has to fetch water from distant places women has to go work more and more they have to spend more time on it well what happens they started to uh, think that they have to do something about it and result is chipko movement so collecting water firewood become heavier burden it is already burden it becomes heavier why because they have to walk for distant places in order to fetch in order to fetch the water they have to walk maybe kilometers who knows okay this becomes additional burden so what general people will do when they have additional burden like uh, uh, sitting in front of the mobile phone or a computer and watching the youtube videos and noting down the notes well generally what we do we start to complain yes or no yes now from over there observe my dear just observe we may knew that real value of the forest so question who knew the real value of forest or the forest officials or the businessmen that is women what was the real value not the timber it's a springs and streams springs yeah. what is springs and streams don't tell that springs is our textbook and streams is our workbook springs and streams water resources they are talking about water resources we get water from the forest because of the forest we get the forest springs and streams food for their cattle fuel for their hearts heart means yes pole the women declared that they would hug the trees so finally what they have what happened over here now deforestation taking place they cannot get water with the water from nearby areas so they have to do something what did they do they decided to do something that is they decided to stop deforesting how by hugging the trees and they declared if you want to cut trees you have to kill them first so what and at those times in this all um, uh, revolutions or movements and all we generally come across some songs inspiring songs so one of that inspiring song over here is given of course it is seems to be slightly difficult because it's english translation of the song indian rural women rural women did not sing songs in or compose songs in english you have to understand that this beautiful oaks and rhododendrons they give us um, cool water don't cut these trees we have to keep them alive this is a kind of a folk song they used to sing at those their meetings and all now what happened okay this is briefly about the beginning of one movement that is chipko movement now chipko movement has begun and how did when did she join chipko movement chipko movement started in 1970s in 1973 early 1970s she went to visit her favorite forest because the where she has grown up i guess she swam to swim in my favorite stream before leaving for canada for her phd so she was going abroad before going somewhere before going to canada she wanted to go and visit the places she used to visit so she went to that particular stream to swim like the young girl she were but to surprise or to shock to her, there was no stream only trickle trickle means sannadagi hariyuvantad very little water was there very little water was there she cannot swim at all she maybe she can wash her hands or legs and that's it so that was something affected her see next part she decided to become after that what she has done she decided to become a volunteer for chipko movement and she has done pad yatras and during the pad yatra she has she, during the vacations okay during the vacation she had done all the pad yatras and she documented the works of chipko movement what is happened what they have done how it is impacting and all in the forest all this forest activities are chipko movement and all the activities at the same time she started to spread the message what is the need, what is chipko what is the need of such a movement all this information started to spread all over okay next part the last paragraph of 23 she discusses about one particular uh, action incident what is it one dramatic accident uh, action she says it happened in the village of adwani in the year 1977 okay 1977 it's not the beginning of the movement observe 
She was already part of the movement in 1973. So in Himalayan village of Adwani in 1977, one incident happened, a very, very important incident. What is that? That is the woman named Bachni Devi. Okay. In Adwani, that is Bachni Devi. Now, what about this particular thing? Bachni Devi led the resistance against her own husband, who has gained contract to cut the trees. Okay, Bachni Devi, in Martha, she leads, she becomes a leader, and with a group of other women, she leads a resistance. They stop people from cutting the trees. Who got contract to cut the trees? Her own husband. So she is leading a team to stop that. Yes, it is in the 1970s, a woman taking a lead against her own husband is maybe a sensational news at that time. We have to understand that. Now what happened? How did it happen? So when these women are hugging the trees, they are stopping them from cutting the trees. Forest official has have, officials have come. When the forest officials have come, what these women do? They show the lighted lanterns. So lantern are lights for that matter. Lanterns are now, they show to these people, forest officials. Why? Now lantern becomes a symbol of knowledge, right? Lantern. So they are saying that we are going to show you the right path. This is not the path of forestry. You don't know. We are going to teach you. That is the underlaid meaning. So they showed the lighted lamps, and then forest official naturally said that you women, the rural women, you don't know the value of the uh, real value of the forest. What is the real value for them? These officials, it was timber, wood, and profit. All these are monetary gains. Short-run monetary gains. Short-run monetary gains was only their focus not the ecological balance, natural disasters like what's happened, what we are observing all these days, all these things, they did, it didn't concern to them at that time. So women knew the real value of forest. Okay. So when forest officials said that they knew the value of the forest, this women said that real value of forest is not the timber, instead it's the pure air, and the water and all those things are there because of this. The earth is being sustained. Everything is because of forest. So this is what the value of forest for the women. So the question can be asked. What do the forest officials think the value of the forest? How is forest is useful? For them it's a timber. Forest profit, profit from resin and timber. For women, it is water, food, fodder, pure air. Okay, this is the difference. Now we can understand who is educated, who is stupids. No, educated stupids and non-schooled people. Right. So we have to make a distinction be between that too. Next part, beyond the monocultures. Now what is discussed about, we are going to discuss about monoculture. Now monoculture it means growing the same crop okay, on, or only one crop. Something like uh, in today, uh, like in Puttur and all, we can see Araka, Araka net farmer no it's a plantation araka plantation we can see now if you observe this araka nut plantation it's not just araka nut trees there are so many other also they may be coca they may be um, of course usually we can see pepper and others right so many others they, we mix up but it is still it's a kind of that even when we are doing the farming activities also if you are growing one particular crop only that Paddy, only paddy fields, nothing to, we do, don't mix some other crops also in between that. This has started only recently. Recently means in few years, 50, last 50, 30, 40 years. Before that, people used to mix the crops. That's what we have to realize, one thing. Why? Based on the context. Observe. 
so chipko introduced her to biodiversity and biodiversity based living economics economics well we know that uh, that is something to do with the money and business and all now she talks about biodiversity based economics is not just making profit let the profit be on the basis of biodiversity how it is to do that now she wrote a book yes what is the name of the book now she wrote a book this third one right monocultures of the mind monoculture monoculture means growing only one crop now it's a mind mentality is itself is like that we think all from only one perspective we don't do all this all the stuff comes over here now observe martha hogi monocultures of the mind it discusses about the we fail to understand biodiversity and its many functions is at the root of the impoverishment of nature and culture she comes up with an argument and she proves that what is that our monocultures of the mind the failure to understand biodiversity we are failing to understand it why as a result there is an impoverishment of the nature and culture everything is linked impoverishment of nature and culture is linked to the monocultures our culture is not a monoculture it's another understanding well we can come to that later on in the second part we are going to discuss something related to that now now she learned the lessons of biodiversity in the himalayan region himalayan forest and from that knowledge she used to change uh, page number 24 second paragraph i transferred the protection of biodiversity on our farms so the forest there is a diversity it is not monoculture not only one type of a tree everything is to, lives together right so from that she has applied the same idea even to the farms okay how did it transfer the protection of biodiversity on our farms even in the biodiversity should be there even in the farms then it will be useful so she started to saving seeds from uh, farmers fields then realized that we need a farm for demonstration training so she come up with this idea biodiversity based farming right as soon as somebody proposes an idea a farmer wouldn't take it he should know it it is for real once if it comes to our understanding if you know it's really happening it's a real thing then he would do it so, so in order to give demonstration in order to give demonstrate the people that see if you are doing like this you will get more crops you will get healthier crops well they need a place so they started navadanya farm okay so navadanya farm was started in 1994 when did navadanya farm started that's a navad 19 94 okay in dune valley in dune valley a flower himalayan region of uttarakhand province so in dune valley they have started navadanya farm in 1994 observe beyond monocultures is like another topic sub topic so what they are doing over there they preserve seeds how many seeds they are different types of seeds they have prepared they have prepared more than we conserve and grow Six thirty uh, varieties of rice, one six one fifty varieties of wheat, and hundreds of other species. Six thirty varieties of rice. How many types of rice we know? Yes. So there are six thirty varieties. So they have to it. They are saving it. And in order to save it, they have to grow it again and again. Right? Every year they have to grow it. Somebody has to do that. the farmers has to know that there is 630 varieties he can use so in order to give all this uh, information they have started navadanya farm in dune valley okay now the conservation biodiversity is an answer to food and nutrition crisis she says now last line of that particular paragraph if we conserve biodiversity food crisis and nutrition crisis it can be answer for that how is it you can grow more 
you can more you can grow more crops with this help of this technique this is the idea she is going to she portrays over there next in uh, 24th uh, next paragraph she talks about biodiversity conversation and organic farming started in 1987 navadanya farm was started in 1994 but the idea navadanya movement started in 1987 So what is this? In the beginning stage of their movement, biodiversity-based uh, living economy, sorry, biodiversity-based farming, they did not realize, they did not identify that there is a real need, or only then did they come to. After that, they come to know that. So, 1987, they have started Navadanya farming type of biodiversity conservation, uh, conservation and organic farming. They have started on that. Now it's growing. now they have more than 100 community seed banks seed banks operated and maintained by farmers themselves then 3000 varieties of rice 3000 all over the all over the country 3000 varieties of rice they have now and also they give importance to change our farming uh, structure what is that transition from fossil fuel to chemical based monocultures to biodiverse ecological system nourished by the sun and soil we don't need all those kind of chemical based uh, what is it supplements for the plants okay it is already available it's there in the nature only we should know how to use that this is one of the idea now she says last line of the biodiversity has been my teacher of abundance and the freedom of cooperation mutual giving so she is she has learned about the freedom and mutual giving cooperation cooperation how to learn from cooper how to, what is there about cooperation in the nature everything one thing helps other thing one crops helps the other crops um the grass helps the plant, uh, animals and animals this cattle they help the grass in turn in some other way right we know we have come across all these things already okay any doubts i think so not so beyond monoculture there is monoculture and we have to change from monoculture to biodiversity intensive farming and that is the best way but the best answer to the food and nutrition crisis and they have also talked about uh, 198 the navadanya movement started in 1987 and 1994 they have started navadanya farm navadanya farm was started so that they give uh, training to the uh, sorry demonstration to the farmers right so next part rights of the nature on the global stage what she speaks about rights of the nature like human right right to education even the nature we have as we have our own rights even the nature has its own right in a global stage what is that global stage it is discuss that in the global level okay so we have to understand that nature is a teacher and we have to study, uh, understand from her and we have to recognize that this nature has this power to teach us at the same time it has also its rights so few things first talks about ecuador's constitution ecuador in the constitution has written <laughs> that there is rights of nature and sir ecuador has recognized rights of nature in its constitution and another uh, understanding we have to go with that in 2011 something happened united nations general assembly there was a conference what was the conference uh, on the earth day celebration they had a conference where they have discussed about harmony with the nature now 
units of one general assembly that's a two or three and there is one more that is Bolivia now what about Bolivia Bolivia has our um, has declared us over there page number 25 line 4 or 5 okay universal declaration of rights of mother earth by Bolivia so Bolivia initiated that universal rights of universal declaration of rights of mother earth and constitution of Ecuador recognizing rights of nature these two influenced the UN General Assembly over there on the Earth Day celebration of the year 2011 they have come up with one conference at the end of the conference they have uh, in general uh, sorry Sec secretary general writes a report on harmony in nature and in that conjuncture he I, finally uh, and uh, shows that it he writes that ultimately environmentally destructive behavior or uh, we are behaving in destructive to the environment is because of we fail to recognize that as as a human we are part of nature we do not we think that we are not the nature we are other than nature we think that and because of that we are damaging the nature so the report says that we are damaging the nature because we do not consider ourselves as a part of nature this is another one okay and that leads to another idea that is separatism separatism means separating right now Cormac Cullinan points out that there is an apartheid what is apartheid it is not the apartheid we are talking about uh, happened in the South Africa or America we are talking about eco apartheid eco apartheid is there we are separated ourselves from the nature based on one illusion Brahman we have an illusion that illusion of separateness of humans from the nature and it is in our minds and lives we have this uh, separated ourselves okay earlier uh, separatism is racial segregation now we are segregating ourselves from the nature so this is another part okay and next a few things are there we can discuss in short thank you